In this tutorial, you will learn more about the power of timeline. First of all, to open the timeline, just press this button located at the bottom of the user interface to open the timeline. The timeline is a free floating interface with many tracks and subtracks for everything in iClone 4. However, it can be docked as well. Let me zoom out further so you can just see how by double clicking on the timeline, you can dock the timeline to the lower section of your user interface, and by double clicking again to move it back to free floating window. This is purely for preferences, but for me, I like the freedom to throw my timeline around, so I like to keep it free floating. Notice in my scene I have a character. To open the tracks for my character, I can just click on this button, called the track list, and go to the characters and select the named character. Now notice I have one long track for my character with a few menus. If I wish, I can open all of these menus up to see clearly for all my characters transforms, motions, spatial animations, and much more. Currently there is no command, but I will use the right click menu on my character to activate one of the AML animations of my character's persona. Then if we open up the command track, you will notice now there is a bar here representing that animation. Now the timeline control when and how long the animation will last. Let's start first with when. Notice currently the animation starts at frame 01. If we zoom the timeline out, we can move the animation to start at frame 100. Then when we play back, notice the delay before the actual animation will play. We can also change the speed of the animation. For example, let's go to the edge of our animation clip and drag, causing the animation to be stretched out longer. If we play back, notice the animation is much slower now. We can also speed up the animation by making it shorter. Okay, let's delete that animation and add in another one. This time we'll use animations from the templates. Next I want to show you some of the controls we can use with right clicking inside of the timeline. Only Pro Edition has these menus, but some of these controls can be accessed via the timeline panel. For example, let's say I wanted to cut this animation in half, and I only want to keep the first part. We can choose the keyframe on the timeline, and right click on select break. This will break the animation into two separate animation clips. Let's delete that second part. Now let's copy and paste this animation clip again by right clicking on the animation and then the timeline to paste. Then right click on the animation again and we can tell this animation to reverse. This will reverse the animation clip. Now we can place the two animation clips where they just touch and watch the outcome of the new animation we created of her jumping backwards then jumping forwards. Now if we want to collect this clip, we can open the Collect Clip track and drag along the track to highlight the animations, then right click on the animation and add motion to library, then name it, and press save. Now we have saved our animation sequence and we can access it from our custom animation library. But we can also create animation with keyframes and the timeline. For example, this box is here, but if we set a keyframe at this point on the timeline, then we use the move tool to create a transform to a new location, then we have just created animation with this box. Maybe here between these two points, we can add in another point and have the box rise in the air. That means from this keyframe to this keyframe, the box will rise in the air to this position, then from this keyframe to this keyframe, it will lower down to the other position. Let's press play to watch. Notice the box seems to leap into the air. We can also collect these keyframes and add this animation into our library as well. Now when we add that animation in, it will be in the form of an animation clip and not just a bunch of random keyframes. To explain about transitions, I opened up this project. Notice the ball on the left is using ease in and out and the ball on the right is using Linear Transition Curve. If we press play, you can notice that the ball on the left will slowly accelerate and decelerate at the beginning and end of its animation, and the ball on the right will not. Let's change the transition curve for the ball on the right, and we will change it to ease in and out. And now when we play back, 
you'll notice that both our spheres will move identically since they both have the same transition curve. And that is how we can use the timeline to affect the timing, speed, and nature of our animations as well as everything else inside of your iClone 4 projects.